Hello again. I've had a three week break, four week break. We have uh, successfully moved into the new palace, the Scobie. I'm never moving again because it was the uh, among the worst experiences of my life. I managed to escape the decorating and the painting to get a day's angling. So roll that intro. First time, first session since I've uh, had a bit of a four week break. First cast with a feeder, you won't believe what I've just caught. A little jack pike. I thought initially it took the feeder, but it didn't. It actually took the maggots. The maggots are sitting there in its mouth. If I can just get them out, it would be awesome. So there we go. Pike on the feeder. I'll not put him in the keep net, I'll just put him back in. At least it's not a blank. Here's a wee tip for you. Just after you've cast your feeder, hold the rod just for 20 seconds or so. Because you find very often when the feeder hits the bottom, the maggots are still fluttering down. And that can bring fish from the uh, upper columns of water. Flow is heading that way towards Inniskillen. Uh, 50 gram feeders aren't holding the bottom, so I might have to switch it to 60s. Believe it or not, I'm feeding a lot of hemp to try and get roach in, <laughs> and all I'm getting is perch. Some folk have been texting me on the Facebook page asking, you know, where have I been? You know, you know, obviously, like I've been moving house. The good thing about the house, it has a garage. Well, it's now a man cave. Let me show you some footage for the man cave. Here we are, in the man cave, or what will be the man cave. The plan is to paint all these walls white, just to make things a bit easier for me. That way when I'm in here doing YouTube shit, then lighting won't be so bad. There's some shelving here on the wall, I'm not sure if I'm keeping it. I have been looking at some heavy metal stuff that you screw to the actual wall, it's rated for, each shelf is rated for 100 kilos, so more than enough of anything that we would put on the shelves. <sighs> Moving house, never again. A few moments later. Update. Painting the walls white. I have the first coat sort of down on most of it, I guess. And then, the shelves. These fucking things. There's me delicately going around them with a paintbrush thinking, okay, I didn't realise the planks of wood weren't screwed down, so I could have just lifted the fucking things and then rolled it on. But, no. <sighs> Getting together though. It'll be nice once it's finished with white paint. Get the shelves up. I have the bait freezers in. Then I can organise the fishing gear. Getting there slowly but surely. More moments later. Finally, got all the gear into the man shed. 
just have to bring the boat across but that's for tomorrow the shelves don't quite know if I'm keeping them I think they might be a bit weak for what I want but what a slog see when you're feeder fishing this is going to be difficult I always try and keep one hand on the rod it's going back to when I was doing a lot of match angling you know, when you, you put your rod in the rest, it's sitting there, the tips sit how you want it I, mean, I, try, I like to keep my hand on the rod so if there's a quick bite I can lead into it we're using braided lines in the shock leader so we don't have to strike we just have to set the hook So what have I missed for the four weeks that I wasn't here fishing, talking to you guys? You can see the cops are still on their knees. We've got crazy people on the TV most of the time. The mask Hitlers. These fucking crazy people who just shout at you if you don't have a mask on. Like your, there's a shop we were in, the wife and I, and the floors were marked out. There was like arrows where you were meant to walk what direction. There was a little little old man who who walked the. Uh, the wrong way I guess, turned into the aisle, the wrong aisle. And this fucking lunatic of a woman, I mean started screaming at him, middle of the shop. Because he went down the wrong aisle in the supermarket. And what's more, nobody in the immediate area stood up for the old fella. I found that annoying as well. I turned around and says to the woman, you know, wind your neck in. It's an old fella, leave him alone. She was going to call the uh, security for the shop and everything. No shit, this is in the middle of fucking Tesco's. So we're still living with the coronavirus. The, uh, the new norm, I guess, is we're going to be pushing everyone away. Johnson wants us all to lose weight. Which will be. Which is good. I suppose losing weight is. Is good, I guess. I just kind of don't like taking health tips from somebody who, you know, comes out and complains that they didn't deliver his favourite Indian restaurant food to number 10. <laughs> I think Boris is a bit of a joker at the best of times. I'm just happy that it wasn't the other fella. Jesus, can you imagine him running the country? Can you imagine Corbin? Else is happening. Oh, America. <laughs> They're planning to defund the police. 
Good luck with that one, Americans. Just because there's one bad policeman doesn't mean all policemen are bad. Let's uh, flip it another way. This is how the media plays it, the mainstream media. When a crazy Muslim blows himself up and kills a load of innocent people, what's the first thing Channel 4, BBC, Sky News, what's the first thing they say? I guarantee you the first, within the first few minutes of it being established that it was a Muslim terrorist or whatever. Well, we can't blame all Muslims on the action of one of them. That's what they'll say. That's what they do say. So why is that different for the police? Don't get it. Maybe somebody can explain it to me. We live in a society where we have to obey the rule of law. The police are the arm that enforces the rule of law. It keeps society polite. Or they could do it the other way, just take away the police and give everyone a gun. It would be like the purge. I was asked if I'm going to do a tour of the new house to show people. Uh, short answer is no. I just have to do too much to the house. You know, we're getting like a log burning stove in the living room, new fireplace, you know, master bedrooms getting fitted, complete wallpaper decorating, you know, new floor, low uh, hardwood floor. So there's lots to do, but it's not a mar it's not a sprint. They don't have to do it all right away. I have made the garage, as you've seen, the the perfect place to store all my fishing gear. I have got the boat across in the driveway. That will become a uh, a new a new uh, series on the channel. Refurbing the boat. When you're seeing this, it's uh, nearly the 2,000 subscriber mark on my channel. <laughs> Blows my mind. That 2,000, nearly 2,000 people out there watch my crap. Well, that was about... One eternity later. Bit of a change around there. The river has started moving a fair bit more, so I've had to change my setup. So the rods are now the rods now you know up in the air. Still using a fifty gram feeder. It's just about holding the bottom. But with this style of fishing, your tip's going to be really really bent over. It is perfect drop back bites. The fish will come along and pick up the bait, and then it'll, the, the tip will spring back. For those of you out there that are interested, I did get another batch of uh, David Scobie Angling Adventure stickers. The one with the big pike in the middle of it. It is just what your boat, tackle box, garage door needs. If you're wanting one of them, I'm going to leave a link or description in the description about how you can get them. But I can't believe I sold 200 of them. You know, wow. thing about this style of fishing because you're sat looking up the whole day by the end of it you get a bit of a stiff neck but still had a few cold beers tonight won't solve I have to admit 
I am loving having my own garden. I have a night the house that we bought. One of the reasons we bought it was because it has a really big front garden and back garden. The intention, I don't think it's big, but something's on. The intention for the back garden, at least, is for it to be patioed and so a nice wall around it. Somewhere that, you know, is you know, secluded and safe, you know, if we want to have the guests around, we have somewhere we can entertain, so to speak. Yeah, that was a little, little perch. Come on, you little bastard. That brings us up to 12 fish so far. I did also buy a landing net today for the pike fishing. I ordered it in December, but ProLogic said that they were out of stock. So it took, you know, that was taken from the back end of last year to, to get it in stock. But I'll do a review on that later on. I haven't even had it out of the plastic sleeve yet, so. I'm hoping it's a land on that. I'm hoping I just haven't you know, walked to some of these top section or something like that there, but we'll soon find out. If you were a nice hybrid, you wouldn't you like that there? If you were a nice big bream, you'd be on that like a tramp on hot chips. Let's see if we can catch something else other than perch. It's gone a bit quiet. So I think I might have to... Well, part of me wants just to kind of, you know, chuck four of them in. Full of particles and chop worms to see if I can kick this one in the ass to get it moving again. Not that it was really moving in the first place, all I was getting was like small perch. I think I've had one roach and one one skimmer. That's even with fishing with the rod up in the air. I got asked to show you what, what, what rig I'm using. There's many different rigs you can use in a feeder. Oh, there we go, we've got the bite. There's many different rigs you can use for feeder fishing. Oh, well, this feels a bit better. Hopefully this might be, might be a nice hybrid or something. It's not jumping up and down, so I don't think it's another pig. Whatever it is. And it broke me off. Yeah, that was a pike. If you if you just feel the last few inches of the oh yeah, definitely a pike. <laughs> I do not know why I'm catching so many pike on the feeder today. Anyway, what we will do is we will tie on another hook. I think I have some here. we 
we'll tie on another hook and then we will show you how to do the the feeder rig that I'm using at this point in time it's just a simple three loop rig I don't even know if that's the proper name for it I'll, I'll tie it up and you can see it Get some maggots on this and leave the cast out, then I'll do the I'm just watching the feeder kind of, once it lands it kind of, it'll drift down the river a little bit with the current. But eventually it'll kind of stop. The feeder's not holding the bottom. So it's just kind of dinking down the, the riverbed. And that is it stopped now. No, still going. I don't actually mind if the feeder is dinking down the, down the riverbed because fish like uh, skimmers, they'll chase the bait. So you could have your swim feeder just, just moving slowly down through the, along the cross the bottom of the river. And it's dragging the bait behind it. And that sometimes entices the, the skimmers to smash it up. But eventually it'll settle. And your tip will sit like that there. And then when you get the bites they're all like that there. Back to where we were. That's what I'm using for my shock leader at the moment. Uh, three rod lengths or two and a half rod lengths. And you end up with, it's, it's, it's actually, well, it's a, it's a toss up between this and the tapered leader. With a tapered leader, you have to fish like the helicopter rig. With this stuff, you can you can fish it slightly differently. First of all, now pretend that you've threaded this on, you tie this to your spool, and you've got your 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 correct amount on your rod, and this is your tail end, this is your tackle end. You would take, make a loop. I 
I like a big loop. So I make a loop at least 14 inches. You then do a figure of eight knot. You wet it. In fact, you don't. Can I have a cock it up? Yep, I have made a boo boo. <laughs> right. So you get your line, you make your loop, you thread on a feeder swivel. Then you tie a figure of it, not. Start again. I lost the tag end. So you make your loop, your swivel is on, figure of eight knot. tight step tag end throw away responsibly so there you have a a big loop with your feeder swivel in the middle of it now this the idea for this is that the feeder swivel will be able to move up and down this loop. The loop's usually about ten, eight to ten inches, you know, so it's it's got room to move. You then take the tail end. Now, the tail end is about about three or four inches, you know, so it's got the tail end, and you tie a figure of eight knot. That leaves you your loop that your swim feeder will attach to the swivel. So there we have the knot and the loop. And we go and divide that by half and we tie another figure of eight knot. So you have your swivel and you have your two, your little loops that you, that's the little loop at the bottom you tie your hook to, or your loop to loop your hook to. But when you, this is on the line and you pull down on this, the swim feeder is going to add the weight to this. It provides like a little boom that throws your hook length away from your feeder. And that is my standard feeder fishing rig for most of the rivers here. There's a couple of ways you can do it. There's a couple of competitions like the uh, the Preston feeder thing, Preston feeder championships, I think it's the feeder championships, where you're not allowed to have a fixed rig, you have to have a free running rig. So that rig wouldn't be allowed, that rig would be, uh, that would be verbatim. So you'd have to have like a, a free running rig those are easy enough tied as well 
I'll demonstrate one of them the next time I'm out fishing. See? Don't say I don't teach you anything. Zebra mussels. That is a clump of zebra mussel. Zebra mussels, plural. I'm not putting it back in. But that is one that's decided to eat my hook. It doesn't look like it's destroyed much of the line though, which is quite good. Those things are a pain in the balls, I swear to Christ. It's not been the most productive day. I think I'm going to give it another maybe three quarters of an hour, maybe half hour. And then go home. It's completely died off for me. It's not died off for the cormorants though. I can see cormorants on the far side. And they seem to be having the time of their life, so... That tells me there's a shoal of fish hugging the far bank. And even if I had a shotgun, the cormorants are still too far away. Yes, cormorants, they should be on a general license. They should be on a general license so anyone can shoot them. Right, let's see what we finished up with. I'm not open for much, but we had 15 fish in the end. That's probably the best. Yeah. Some little hybrids and a load of perch. It's not so bad. It's good to be back out. Uh, gonna go back to the house now, have a beer, and uh, relax a wee bit. Until next time, guys, tight lines. <laughs>